Shauna Swan, someone, a name I do not recognize, at the Econ School of Medicine in New York, finds that sperm counts have dropped almost 60% since 1973. Following that trajectory, sperm counts could reach zero by 2045. Zero. Comment? Love you too. Yeah, not expecting zero um, yeah. because you're going to get uh, a decay, whatever is causing that decrease, and it could be various things. Undoubtedly, there's the impact of certain novel environmental compounds, uh, estrogens and things yep. floating around. It could be that there are demographic factors, sperm counts drop uh, in individuals over a lifetime, and so you can get a demographic shift that can result in these things. Presumably, much of this has been controlled for in the research but it's not going to go to zero. It's going to get low yeah. um, or lower, presumably. But, you know, you would expect it to uh, to asymptote to some number. Now, if yeah. that number Well, is, so A, diminishing returns. Yeah. Um, but B, to the extent that uh, any country, any population begins to see this as an actual risk and a way to succeed in the future yep. uh, to the extent that, you know, the, the, the obvious th factors here are environmental contaminants, environmental uh, hormones that are getting into the water supply, especially, right? Yep. Um, but there are quite possibly other factors as well. But even just really focusing on cleaning up the endocrinological effects of pollution in the water supply, uh, some country w could likely begin to reverse that effect. Yeah. Now, I would add that I think there's a question of whether decreasing sperm counts are a proxy for something absolutely dire or absolutely dire in and of themselves. And I feel certain Mm -hmm. They're a good proxy. Things are off. Yep. And things being off, this is a symptom that we can measure, like glacial retreat or something like that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, what I want to know, and maybe maybe this is known and maybe it's known for, you know, is any country limited in the number of offspring produced because of an infertility crisis due to low sperm counts? I rather doubt that. It doesn't mean it couldn't happen. Yeah, the due to, learn, the due to low sperm counts part of that is, um, I think, going to render the answer to that question. <clears throat> um, no, right? We don't, we don't know. Um, but there are certainly countries that have a lower than replacement rate oh, of fertility sure. at this point. And uh, to the extent that there are abundant social factors that are contributing to that and demographic factors as well, then add to that low sperm counts, and that may just tip you over the edge into not um, not ever rebounding to greater to replacement rate or greater. Maybe, but if the answer is that we have socially changed and technologically changed, and people are choosing not to reproduce, that may well be a crisis. But it's a very different kind of crisis. Yeah, but it it, it could not possibly be independent of this. Well, right. I mean, especially even just so there's there's social choice and as I mentioned, demographic and simply pushing reproduction later, you know, when you know later in a man's lifespan, sperm counts decline as well. Yep. So if you have environmental reasons for sperm counts to be declining, and uh, you know, dudes are more likely to say, yeah, I want to be a dad, but not at 25, but at 40. Uh, then those two things together may push individual men um, beyond uh, the possibility of having fertility. Yeah, although I, this is going to be, um, I'll try to keep this simple. The decrease in sperm counts in males seems at first like a senescent effect. I really don't think it is. So not not this new result, but, right. in, but across a lifespan in normal in lifespan circumstances. Because yeah. what also decreases spectacularly is the likelihood of testicular cancer. Testicular mm -hmm. cancer is one of the rare cancers that afflicts people early in life. And so I think what's going on is you have um, sperm competition as a powerful evolutionary selective force early in life. And as men naturally settle down, sperm competition is less and less of an issue. So the point is the massive numbers of sperm that are produced early in life are really about uh, competition between males. They are not about fertility. So at some level, you're asking how much sperm do you really need? Yeah. All it takes is one is something I keep resisting saying here because right. I know that actually all it takes is one is actually a bit glib and wrong. Right. But yeah. But but just to restate what you've just said in slightly different words, um, if 
if what we regard as normal sperm counts are actually uh, exaggerated by the sperm competition of young men who historically have gone to war or otherwise engaged in um, in behaviors that then allowed their sperm to be competing with the sperm of other men, yep. uh, then the the lower levels of either you know late youth or middle age or uh, post industrial societies might not be a problem in and of themselves. Right, and that, actually- that is your hypothesis a perfectly vivid if somewhat itchy way to understand this is to think about if you live in a place with coniferous trees that produce huge amounts of pollen at some point <laughs> that pollen is not necessary to get all of the female conifers pollinated it's males trying to drown out each other's signal right and so anyway that has arbitrary bad effects for us because our immune systems mistake the pollen grains for pathogens. People tend to have allergies to, to gymnosperm pollen? I certainly think so. I think yeah. I do. Okay. Yeah. I, thought, I thought it was mostly um, other wind-dispersed angiosperms, so flowering plants like like grasses and like maple. Yeah, maples. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think people have allergies to all of them. I believe there are a bunch of us who have allergies to the conifers, mm. and it is not uncommon to live in a place where you're car and everything else gets thoroughly covered for a couple of weeks. Yeah, but I mean, at least here, what it gets covered in is maple pollen. Well, it also, I mean, we have like multiple seasons of it. That's true. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, you know, there's a question of, well, I guess maybe I've messed this up because in the case of trees that are putting out huge amounts of pollen, a lot of pollen just never reaches a tree. So, right. you know, you've got two things going on, males yeah. trying to drown out each other's signal a lot of pollen has to be put into the air. If you're yeah, not using wind. an insect to, yeah, to it's, take uh, the pollen to the particular target you have to overproduce. Yeah. I just <laughs> <laughs> Men trying to reproduce this way, it's not going to be very effective. But using insects, hiring insects to do their bidding. <laughs> yeah, that's spreading their sperm into the wind and hoping it lands somewhere <laughs> effective. <laughs> it does make you wonder about men who are overly enthusiastic about buying flowers in the context of, uh, you know, does it? Well, I think it does, yes. No, I don't think it does. I think it does a little bit. Yeah. Okay. We're going to move on. 